and welcome back to another fishing adventure doing some morning fishing this morning it's about 7 30 it's about 65 degrees it's a nice morning as you can see there's a little uh, cloud cover normally the sun would be uh, beating down on this spot this time of day in june but uh got some clouds i love it and uh, as the title suggests i'm going to be keeping some fish today and uh, also going to be eating those fish, but i got to catch them first. Spicy Tiger Nuts is the hook bait. And there is no wind at all. Pond is like glass, and there's no activity on the surface at all either. I don't think the lack of activity is necessarily a bad thing. It just means that uh, the carp aren't jumping, and that's good. That means they're probably on the bottom looking for food. Pack bait is just my usual mix of uh, oats and sweet feed, and I think the flavoring agent in there is a can of peaches. I made this bait last night, kept it in the fridge. Nice. There's that oats and peach pack bait, and uh, the two spicy tiger nuts underneath. Uh, for those that remember, uh, a little while ago I, I broke a rod in half on the cast, and. You know, I just uh, I just went ahead and replaced it. I bought another one. Didn't bother with warranty. I mean, I'm kind of amazed at uh, how many people in the comments wanted to immediately blame the rod. And uh, I don't think that was the issue. I don't think the rod is the problem. I think I must have damaged it at some point. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty hard on stuff. And if you watch my channel, you see I go fishing a lot. So I got a lot of fishing trips out of that rod. I just went and bought another one. Brand new, shiny, time to get it dirty. Probably about eight, 10 feet of water there where I just put that bait. It's a gravel pit, drops off real fast right off the, right off the bank here. So yeah, if I can uh, if I can catch a few uh, carp of the right size, uh, I'll probably keep about two or three today. I'm gonna use this thing today. Don't use this pretty much ever when I'm carp fishing, but uh, it's always in my tackle bag. I've seen a few videos on YouTube of people trying to cook carp, and uh, everything they done, everything that I've seen looks terrible. Uh, they try to mask the flavor of the meat with stuff throw all sorts of you know the whole kitchen cupboard spice rack on the on the fish or uh, Mix it in some kind of casserole or something or I, I I've got a better idea or at least I'm what I'm gonna do is a lot simpler and uh, I don't know if it's gonna be good any good, but uh, that's why I'm trying it Check this out You know what this is? It's a snapping turtle, baby, baby, snapping turtle shell. It's very fragile. Uh, there are some little bits of the tail of the snapping turtle left. I guess there's the there's the tail. It's it died obviously, but uh, so tiny. It's about the size of a quarter. Pretty cool. It's like it seems like it's fragile as like a dry leaf. I've I've seen these these uh, turtles this size before, and they um, their their shells are pretty soft when they're this little. But this one's been laying here on the bank for I don't know how long, a few days. It's dried out, crispy. Pretty cool. Almost an hour and a half. I didn't think it was gonna happen this morning. I was making plans for the next place I was gonna to go to. Still am really, I don't know. This fish isn't on the bank yet. I don't even know if it's a carp. And this is the brand new rod, which is pretty sweet. No curse came with this new rod. Oh yeah. Oh, he got off. He was right there, I just saw him. 
it was a common carp and it was about the right size for uh, for eating Darn. yeah it's 9 30 I was gonna leave at 10 if I hadn't had any fish so I'll give it another half an hour those baits uh, are still good hook is still super sticky sharp okay common question in the comments is how long do I wait before uh, rebaiting my rigs and uh, usually around an hour I usually like to do it about every hour and uh, it's for two, for several reasons uh, probably the main reason is to just to when your bait when your rig is laying on the bottom you don't know what's going on there you don't know if uh, a fish or a crayfish or a turtle or anything else has messed with it while it's laying there and it's it's laying there tangled or um, you know you just don't know so I like to check it at least every hour to make sure you know I don't want to sit there for three four hours and not move a rig and have it be you know tangled or some turtle has removed my hook bait and there's no hook bait and it's sitting there for three hours I mean that's no good so that's probably one of the main reasons why I, I, uh, I like to do it about every hour. Okay, hooked up again. Surfacing out there, now he's swimming at me. Oh, he's coming right in. I got the drag set super light because I'm paranoid about losing him. Oh yeah, there he is. It's a little after 10 o'clock. Two hours fishing here and this is the second bite. Uh, the fish might be a little bit too big to take home. Maybe not. Yeah, he looks all right, I guess. If you heard me taking off. Well, this isn't a catch and release day. No, nope. bad luck for this fish. A thousand other fishing trips and I'm letting them go. Not today. Yep, in the net. Yeah, first fish of the morning. I'm gonna estimate this fish is, uh, I don't know, six, six pounds, seven, maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take him home put him on the stringer looks like a pretty healthy fish and uh, You know the reason I'm here at this lake is it's got relatively clean water for Iowa. That doesn't, that's not saying much but uh, Yeah, good-looking fish on the stringer There he goes He'll be just fine there I don't think I've ever put a carp on a stringer before. I've, I've kept carp many times to use for cut bait, but I don't know if I've ever put them on a stringer before. Uh-oh. I got another one. Got another one. Yep. Yep. Nice. I was just trying to get the rig untangled from the net in that first one. This feels like a catfish. It is a catfish. Nice. Well, Mr. Catfish, looking for you. This is a carp catch and cook video. See ya. Still trying to get rebaited from that fish. Bite is picking up at 11 a.m. That's just weird. I don't know about keeper size this fish. This feels something a little bit bigger. It's hard to tell though. Get that net out. Get that ready before the fish gets here. This fight's got this fish's got energy for days. This is taking a long time. Let's cut it up, cut out a lot of it here. Good fish, got him. 
I think this fish might be a little bigger than what I want. Take a closer look real quick. Yeah, this fish is a, he's a little bit bigger than what I want. He's a thick, stocky, a little bit longer fish too. Very uh, full, distended, uh, full body, you know, belly there. He's got a distended belly down there too. I don't know if this is a female fish. I'm sure spawn is way over here. I mean, the water temp's in the 80s. But uh, I don't know, this is the kind of fish I'd like to catch again. I'm gonna put him back. All right, see ya. See you next time. <laughs> well, I sure launched that umbrella, didn't I? Probably been about 10 minutes. Yeah. That's a nice fish. Yep. I think that's a dinner sized fish. Yeah, this is another one, a little smaller than the first one, which is perfect for what I came here for. I got what I came here for today, two small fish, and I'm going to cook them, see how it goes. This is going to be an experiment. It's going to be fun. Stay tuned. All right, it's the next day, and here are the two uh, carp that I brought home with me yesterday. Uh, let me get them out of the bag here. So as you can see, I, I cleaned them like I would, like a, a whole catfish. I left the meat on the bone. Obviously I removed the uh, skin and the scales and the head and the tail and the fins and everything and the guts. We've just got meat on the bone here. And as you can see, it's, there's, it's pretty red meat. Even the stuff that isn't dark red has a, has a pink hue to it. Looks kind of good actually. There's one more thing I'm going to do to this meat before I start cooking it, but before I do that, I just wanted to mention something about um, expectations of this. As you can see, this is a darker meat, and uh, I am not going to expect it to taste uh, anything like a walleye or a crappie. Um, and I think that's probably where a lot of people, the people that I've seen on the internet that try to cook carp, I think that's where they went wrong, is that they had the wrong expectations. And uh, that these are probably people that enjoyed eating walleye and crappie. And uh, walleye and crappie are some of the most bland and flavorless fish, freshwater fish that we have. And when you eat walleye and crappie, basically all you taste is uh, the breading and the grease. And don't get me wrong, that's it's pretty good, but it's not doesn't have much of a fish flavor to it. But when I look at this, I'm thinking this is going to have a pretty fishy flavor, and uh, it kind of looks like maybe something like salmon or tuna. Uh, any of those sea fish uh, have a pretty fishy flavor. Salmon, tuna, mahi mahi, shark, all those sea fish uh, have a pretty uh, substantial uh, fishy flavor to them and they're good and uh, that's kind of what I'm expecting from this I'm expecting this to have a fishy flavor but I'm just gonna cook these pretty simple today I have not soaked them in anything they've just been in the refrigerator overnight I'm gonna cook these basically exactly how I cook catfish it's gonna be a light breading and uh, shallow fried in a pan but before I do that there's one more thing I need to do to this meat because we've got Y bones in this meat and I'm hoping that uh, by, by scoring the meat uh, that'll take care of those Y bones. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So in this meat here, there are what's called Y bones, and they are literally uh, little bones that are shaped like a Y. They have a fork in them like that, and they're not attached to the spine or anything. They're kind of just floating bones, but there there's probably a couple dozen of them uh, all along this uh, top uh, part of the meat here on both sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice or score with a knife about every quarter inch or so all the way up the side of the fish and as I do that I'm going to be slicing right through those little bones and uh, let me just get going here and show you what I'm talking about start down at the end of the tail should be able to hear it yep and I'm gonna slice all the way down until I hit the spine yep I'm slicing through those Y bones. 
And the idea is that I'm cutting the Y bones into smaller pieces, little bitty pieces, so that when this cooks, those Y bones will basically cook away and dissolve. The hot oil will get in, the, in those little crevices there and uh, the, um, the Y bones will just be gone. You could skip this step and uh, just cook it as is and um, just eat around the bones. You absolutely could do that, it's not a problem. And I did not invent this or anything like that. This is something that I saw somebody else do on a YouTube video. Uh, it was somebody from the, uh, it was like Nebraska, the Dep Nebraska Department of Game and Parks or something like that. This is a video, a long, old video from, I don't know, the video was like square. Uh, but there was an old man on there and he was talking about how he prepares carp and this is how he did it. And uh, it seemed like probably the most logical uh, method that I saw. I saw some pretty goofy things too. So as you can see, I've, I've scored this meat all the way from the tail to the head on both sides and sliced through those little Y bones that are, that are uh, interlaced through the meat. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other fish here. And uh, one thing I learned from that uh, old guy on the video doing this is talking about the size of the carp. The smaller the carp, the better. If you try to do this with a big, uh, bigger carp, those bones, those Y bones, are just going to be that much bigger, and they're it, it's, they're not going to cook away. It just kind of defeats the purpose if, if the Y bones are big. So, uh, really, small fish is the way to go if you want to harvest carp. And now I could cook them whole. Oh, like this but I'm actually gonna cut this into three pieces here uh, so it'll cook uh, a little faster and uh, just kind of portion it out our spine is uh, it's pretty thick there's the spinal cord right there the spine is pretty thick it takes a pretty strong knife to get through it but uh, yeah each fish into three pieces like that. Honestly, the way it looks, it reminds me a lot of tuna steaks, really. You can see the lines uh, through the meat, those swirly lines, that's the same, same in tuna steaks. Yeah, this is interesting. And for the breading, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna do exactly like I do uh, for catfish, and that is a half and half mix of regular wheat flour and uh, cornmeal. Just about a one-to-one -one ratio, flour to cornmeal. And the third ingredient is Cajun seasoning. That's my favorite seasoning uh, for catfish. I'm gonna do this with the carp as well. Obviously, use whatever seasoning you like, I guess, if you're ever gonna do this. And lots of seasoning. Oil's hot, 350. So I'm just going to take these pieces and uh, start coating them in this uh, corn, corn, corn meal and uh, flour mixture. And I want to get the breading in all those uh, cracks right there. That way the oil can get in there and uh, fry out those bones. And in the hot oil they go. Rinse and repeat. Four minutes or so since I put this first one in. Yeah, needs more. With catfish, I usually do about five minutes per side. And these are a little thicker and they have bones in there too. So um, I'm going to say five to seven minutes per side here. So that's probably about seven minutes since this first one went in. Yeah, we're getting some golden, golden brown there. I'm going to go ahead and keep flipping them all here. 
I'm gonna let those other ones uh, cook for another minute or two before I flip them. But as you can see, we've got some golden brown from the cornbread and the flour. That red meat that's underneath the breading is kind of showing through in those darker spots. That's that red meat on, on the out, uh, outer part of the, of the fish there. But uh, got some good golden brown on the breading, and I think it's cooked all the way through. You can see those um, cuts that I made have kind of have kind of fanned out. They've opened up uh, from the heat, so that's good. I was a little concerned about that. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. It smells good. It just smells like frying fish. All right, that's five minutes on the second side. Take a look here. Yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna, that's, again, that's that dark meat. It's not burnt. That's that dark red meat on the outside. If you look in between the stripes, it's golden. I'm gonna give these uh, just another like minute or maybe two back on the first side. I usually do that with catfish too, just to Give it an extra little bit of browning back on that first side. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. And yeah, that's that's gonna be it. I'm gonna go ahead and move these off the uh, out of the oil and onto a paper towel covered plate here. It's time to eat. Here's the finished product. It actually looks pretty good. Smells really good. That dark meat on there is kind of uh, different. Not used to that, but uh, it's not burnt. Let's give them a try. Okay, I'll be the first taste tester here. I'm just gonna, not sure exactly how I'm gonna eat this. I guess I'll just try and pull some meat off. There we go. It's really hot still. It looks pretty good. Yeah. What do you think? It looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It smells like catfish. It tastes exactly like catfish. Tastes exactly like catfish. The first bite I didn't have any bones. The second bite I did. And here it is. It's one of those Y bones. It's just the tip of it. Might have to score the meat a little closer together to get all those. Surprisingly good. Mm hmm. Another bone. That was what I was thinking was going to be the biggest obstacle. This is the piece that is um, closest to the head. This is like the shoulders. And I think the, the bone the Y bones might be bigger here. It might be less in the in the in the tail. Henry's gonna give it a try here. Is this your first bite? Or did you already try yeah. it? It's first bite. He's putting a little ketchup on it. Yeah, it tastes like um catfish. You think it tastes like catfish too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah, I probably couldn't tell the difference between catfish and carp. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It doesn't even taste as fishy as like salmon or any of the seafood, does it? Yeah. Here's a piece that's farther down the body. This is the tail piece. Let me try that and see if there's any bones. There's one right there. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting bones too. A little bit. Mmm. That was pretty good. No bones in that bite except for the one that I picked off. 
So yeah, this is our dinner for tonight. Fried carp with mashed potatoes and green beans. It's not too bad, really. It's not, and I'll probably try it again. Might make the scores a little closer together uh, to eliminate those um, Y bones a little better. But yeah, it does seem like maybe it's a little fattier than catfish too. The first bite I had was just like, hmm, catfish. And uh, it's very catfish-esque. But kind of fattier, yeah. Overall, not bad though. Definitely not gross or anything like that. Well, if you have any tips for uh, cooking carp, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. See you on the next one. I'm sure the tips will be, yeah, bury it in your garden for fertilizer. Too many bones.